Hello everybody, I'm Quentin and I'd like to show you some uh, changes I've been making recently to the mounting of our e-propulsion electric outboard on our Tideway dinghy, Shingabis here. And a couple of new changes uh, that have made this much easier. I'm going to try most of them out for the first time properly tomorrow. But let me show you what I've got here. So if you're familiar with e-propulsion motors, you'll know they look roughly like this. You have a tiller here, which also has some electronics in it, and um, the battery sits on the back there, and this is the main shaft of the motor. And um, I've had various methods in the past of mounting it here um, with uh, rubber protector. I don't have the rubber protector over the transom to, um, to, to, to protect the wood. But we've now got this reinforced transom recently put on, and that means I can put a proper engine mount on the back. So uh, she's going to be, I think, a lot more convenient there. And it also means that if I am, um, I don't have to take the, the rudder off. If I'm switching between sailing and motoring, I don't have to take the rudder off to, to put the engine on, which was always a bit of a challenge. And this keeps it well clear of the, um, of the rudder, which is something that's important to consider. And when the, the rudder's up, it also keeps it well clear. Uh, this is good. What you want to avoid is having it about halfway up when you run into the prop. Mm -hmm. So I'll need to be careful about that. However, that's a basic setup, but there are a couple of changes that we make to, uh, to make this a little more, more interesting and convenient. Now, one problem I do still have with this arrangement is that if we're getting into the shallows and I want to tilt the prop up, I actually can't really, even though that'll fold up, I still can't tilt it up far enough to, to latch on here in the upright position. So that's one challenge. And the second one I have is that if I'm sitting over on the port side of the boat, it's actually a bit hard to kind of reach and steer with uh, with the outboard uh, tiller all the way over there. So here I have a couple of solutions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the tiller, which I can unscrew here, because actually it's okay, it's not quite as flexible, but it's okay to steer with the, uh, the normal sailing tiller and rudder um, when we're under power. Disconnect that. So I can take that off. How am I going to control it? I'll come back to that. Let me put this out of the way. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm, I want actually to lock this in position so that it doesn't move around while I'm steering with that. And there's a solution to that as well. Let me show you here. So if I take the battery off for a moment, In the top of here, let me show you, there is a little hole which goes through and there is a key which goes in there and, uh, and, can, and locks the, the motor in a fixed position. Now, it's a little plastic key. I've got one somewhere. When I bought the engine, I had no idea I was going ever to use it. So it's locked away somewhere in the packaging, but I did find, manage to find a metal rod of the appropriate size, which will go in here and that is now locked in a forward only position. So that's the first, just tidy that up. So that's my first thing, I can get rid of the tiller. Then um, to make life easier to organize, I don't want to mount the battery on here. Instead, <laughs> I have this, which is purely decorative. This is a little cowling which goes on here and I have a battery on an extension cable which I can fit there. Let me show you this. So, um, so that cable is actually going to a battery under the thwart here and I can put my under one under the thwart over here. And so if I need to, if I run low on power on one battery, I could switch simply by switching the cable over. So that's very neat. So now what we have is minimal engine there. 
and we have batteries with the weight more balanced in the center of the boat and we have no tiller no way of steering using the motor but that's fine because we have the regular tiller what don't we have we don't have a way of controlling the throttle but that turns out to be easy to fix because e-propulsion make this remote control for these engines and um, I knew this was theoretically possible but it only dawned on me recently just how useful this is so it's a little unit I've got it bolted onto a bit of board here and velcro this is just my prototype mount that I put together yesterday it has a man overboard kill switch as normal I turn that on what's really cute about this while it's warming up is that it's actually solar powered here so it has batteries and you can connect it up with a cable but this is a wireless connector so i don't have to have any cables between my motor at the back and my throttle control and it's showing me here i've got 95 percent battery and if i put it forward there we can see the prop spinning and uh, likewise reverse in this direction so as a recap, let's just have one more look at the system here. So we've got outboard mounted on the back, but without the battery on it. Cable take, getting the power from either of these two batteries, which are stored under the thwart to take the weight nice and forward. Uh, very simple now, lightweight engine, uh, silent. Um, it really is, actually the motor is down there. You could almost get away with just this bit. It's, it really is pretty much like having a a prop on a prop shaft coming out from under the boat um, and remote control to control the forward and reverse throttle here it even has advantages like the fact that this is my sort of man overboard kill switch which will be attached to me uh, sorry it's a bit windy here hope you can hear me um, and I will be sitting right here so I don't even have the problem of that string getting caught up in other things around the boat um, as I'm moving around all of this does involve paying rather a lot of money to e-propulsion, of course. Uh, extra batteries, ridiculously expensive extra cables, extra remote controls, and that's on top of an, on, an already expensive motor. But to me, this does seem like a really nice system. Completely silent power, easily switching between that and sailing uh, with just the press of a couple of buttons. And that, to me, will be a really wonderful combination. I'm going to try it out tomorrow. I'll see how it goes. So here we are, out at sea. We're just off the uh, the Essex, actually Suffolk. Are we in Essex or Suffolk? Essex, Essex. We're in Essex, the Essex coast here. And I'm making use of the new remote control here. Um, there's there's some wind, but not very much. And it's actually, uh, this is actually working brilliantly. I'm very pleased with this. I have the outboard back there, which is pushing us along. With a little help occasionally from the wind and full control of it from here and it's hard to imagine an easier way in a small dinghy to switch between electric power and wind power as this i could turn the engine off there you go now we're under wind and i can just push it on again and we're under power and it really doesn't make much uh, really doesn't make much difference to the overall sound levels and just being able to turn on a little bit of extra wind from time to time is a very nice feature so very pleased with this i may try and make it look a little bit more professional now